It might have been a surprise when you heard Stan Van Gundy was hired to be the next head coach of the New Orleans Pelicans. After all, he seemed to be enjoying being an NBA analyst on TV, but getting back on the bench means taking over a talented but underachieving squad featuring the unique abilities of Zion Williamson. So, let's look at what Stan ran in Detroit to get an idea of how he'll use Zion and whether it gets them to the playoffs. What you'll notice first with Van Gundy's offense is how much of it is run through the high post. And it would be easy to imagine Zion playing the Tobias Harris role here alongside whichever center the Pelicans will have on the roster. This pinch post action will be almost impossible to stop, especially going to Zion's strong left hand. But Zion will get more elbow touches this year than he's ever gotten, as they love to run this pistol action across the top with a screen away for the guard into handoff at the elbow. This becomes a pick and roll 15 feet from the hoop, and guys like Lonzo Ball will be tossing lobs to Zion for easy scores all game long. Here's a nice set that caught my eye. Elevator action to get it in bounds as the two screeners close the doors after Reggie Jackson cuts between. This instantly breaks into a horn set. Imagine Zion screening at that left elbow, then watch how he flares off the weak side center for a spot up. Getting Zion a flare pass with space would open up so much for him going to the middle. It was good to see quick hitters out of Van Gundy's offense as well as quick offense is the name of the game in the NBA. This is their basic flow off the high pick and roll, as Blake Griffin joined the team late in the season. Watch how the handoff out of the corner sucks the defense out of position and gets Blake a shot fake and one dribble dunk. As Stan Van Gundy takes over in New Orleans, there is no question he'll be faced with a lot of pressure to win right away. And that's the kind of stress that would make anyone's hair fall right out of their head on the bench. He's got two choices, go sit at the end of the bench and do some yoga and breathing exercises, or try Keeps, the FDA-approved doctor-recommended plan to help you prevent hair loss from happening in the first place. Thanks to Keeps, you can visit a doctor online and get hair loss medication delivered right to your door. Two out of three guys will suffer some sort of male pattern baldness by the time they're 35. The key is to get Keeps while you still have some hair left. It could take up to four to six months or more to see results, so don't wait. If you're like Coach Van Gundy and noticing that you're losing your hair, do something about it. For a limited time, go to keeps.com slash Coach Nick or click the link in the description to receive 50% off your first order so you can save the hair you have so you can enjoy watching Zion run action out of the high post that much more. Let's go through some of the basic progressions of Van Gundy's high post offense. After the entry pass, the passer screens away and the cutter comes around for the handoff. This would be for guys like Ingram and Redick. This can also be run to the other side as well, meaning Zion can get the screen and come off that handoff on the left side of the floor for a strong finish. Here's the variation when no split screen is set out top. The high post can then dribble handoff to the strong side of the floor. Expect a lot of lobs from Ball to Zion from this kind of attack. Instead of the passer setting that first screen, they can flare screen for him, and then the screener is the one coming around the high post for the handoff. You can see how easy it is to collapse the defense with this option, as Horford has to go to the ball while Tatum is two steps behind the play entirely. They can make this a floppy set for J.J. Redick as the passer cuts off the high post entry down under the hoop, getting two pin downs into a handoff, giving all sorts of room to the shooter either from mid-range or you can get a three out of this as well. Here's one I really like for a good Zion post up. Picture him on the left wing and as the passer follows his high post entry pass, the point guard back screens for the wing. This would normally be a high-low entry, but it doesn't matter when you get it down low. The initial back screen tends to force a switch and a mismatch, which Zion should be able to abuse like Harris does here. The Pistons also initiate with a handoff at the wing, and this flows into pistol action as the big man at the high post sets that inside ball screen. Without question, this is one of the best ways Coach Van Gundy has to collapse the defense with Zion getting the lob and finish. The season Blake Griffin went to the Pistons was a three-point awakening for him, and he's been averaged from back there, which is plenty good from that position. 
primarily out of the pick and pop, Blake needs only get a few more feet from his usual 20 foot range, and they produce mostly wide open looks with this simple play out top. I can guarantee defenses will give at least as much room to Zion, and it's time for him to start developing this shot, which he has hit at an impressive rate, although with such a small sample size, we just don't know how fluky this is. One area Zion didn't use much at all last year was attacking in isolation, and I'd expect Stan to emphasize this a lot, similar to what we saw from Blake. There tended to be an initial action of a possible handoff or a pick and roll that forced a switch before the ball stopped with Blake and they let him go to work, often at the free throw line. These were the more unimaginative possessions we saw from the offense, but with the right matchups and a guy as explosive as Zion attacking, could lead to the kind of go-to offense they'll need down the stretch of close games. If they can get enough shooting around him, Zion would have space and time to dominate in and around the paint on these types of isolations. With the trade just announced that Drew Holiday is going to Milwaukee, and stay tuned for my next video on how Giannis might finally get the title now, it means the Pelicans just lost a standout defender and a lead guard on offense. I imagine it's likely the Pelicans will not keep Bledsoe and try to flip him for some more assets, indicating to me that a deep playoff run isn't one of their goals this year. They've got tons of draft picks coming up and a very young core in Monzo, Zion, and Ingram. This can be the year to get comfortable with each other in a new system and a new coach, so they can fully unleash the team that will compete for titles in 2021. But keep your eye out for how Zion executes his role in this offense. And if he can stay healthy, challenge for the scoring crown this year, which will only make his teammates more dangerous. If all these things fall into place correctly, the Pelicans' fortunes look very good.